When you're coming up with your brand name, it's very important to absorb, observe your environment. And what does that mean? What's going on around me? What's the trends that's happening? Do I want to be a trend or do I want to be timeless? What is the culture of my brand? Is it something that I want to function over the next five years and then I'm going to get rid of it? Or is it something that I want to last a lifetime? So you have to observe the environment, the trends, what's going on. Um, and that's important down from the name, right? So let's say, you know, back in the day, they used to be like everything on fleek. <laughs> Imagine if you had like nails on fleek, LLC. Fleek is not a word that people are using anymore. So you really got to like observe your environment and see what's going on and make sure that those things are timeless. They're not just something that's happening for the moment, but, or, or you got to figure out, is this something that's only around for the moment and who else is doing it? So, you know, just make sure that you consider all those factors those, those factors and how they influence your decision when you come up with that name. You can go to the next one. You know, identify a few candidates. Don't come up with one name like this is it. Come up with like 10. And there are different reasons why you need to come up with 10. For one, again, there's that environmental factor. For two, there's that is it going to be available factor. <laughs> and for three, is it that does this really hit home? Sometimes you come up with a name and I've seen people go quick to like, incorporate the name and then like as they're building out their brand they're like i don't think that this goes with what i was going for and we get confused with um for example i had a psychologist that loved this flower so she wanted to name her company um the lotus something but then she was also west indian so she wanted to call it like irie therapy and i was like i don't know <laughs> you know if that if, if people will get it but Maybe they do, maybe they don't. The thing is that when you make that kind of decision, those environmental factors, you also have to make the decision, the amount of branding work that you're going to put in for people to get it. Because if it's not something that's obvious, then there's going to be a lot of interviews. There's going to be a lot of branding content. There's going to be a lot of explanation and it's going to be constant throughout the life of your company. So you can do it, but you just got to do it. Right. So um, make sure that you identify a few names. And yeah, choose the right one. Um, evaluate the characteristics um, of, you know, what serves your brand well. You know, what's going to be like the, the founding, like when people say that name, that is going to hit home. So when you pick out of that bunch of names, um, go with the first, I would say the top three. I'm not going to say the one yet. I'm going to say the top three because of the next step. Check for the availability, right? I've seen a lot of people, I spoke to a gentleman and he's built a big brand on Instagram. I think it's like black billionaire something. Oh, yeah. yeah, James Hill and someone owns the trademark and the, they own the, um, the website, the .com. And they're like, you want the website? Give me $50,000 for it. They're holding it hostage. There's no website up there. He just won't sell it. So when you choose your name, don't just check for the trademark. Don't just check to see if the company is available. Check for the domain name. Check every aspect of how you would have to register this name because that's a part of your branding. So if you can't trademark, if you can't get a, a, a you know, the social media name, if you can, you can't brand completely. You can't go to the next step. So that's why I say check, try to try to the top three that speak to your soul and then check the availability on all of them. Yes. Well, you incorporate your name and you trademark your name. So when you think about like blue Ivy, she has the clothing line, Ivy park, right? So it's still branding the, the, the child because it's children's clothing, right? But you're also branding the company, which is a separate entity. So it's double branding. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you think about Donna Karen, her name is on the clothes. You don't have to think about who she is, who the designer is. So if I'm, if I have a million dollars and I want to bring a speaker out, guess what? You done branded Donna Karen in my head so much. I'm not going to go look to see who makes that brand. If you don't already know, because those names, Donna Karen, Tommy Hilfiger, they're already branded in you as a culture when it comes to designers. So I think that that's cool. I, I like when designers name their stuff after them. I think that's a bold statement. So Chloe Love was, um, She's the, and I talk about her as a third person, um, because there are different characteristic traits when it comes to Chloe Love. My favorite blue is Lisa is blue. That's my favorite color. My favorite color is blue and purple. Chloe Love's favorite color is red, as you can see it everywhere. So it's the personification of 
the business um, model, the the executive, the ambitious person, the leader. Chloe Love is her own identity that is separate from Lisa. So if you feel like you have to um, create those uh, traits as the strongest parts of you to stand in that, you can rename that. Secure that name. <laughs> so after you pick those top three, and you go through all the social medias, the trademark, is that website being hijacked or squatted on, um, and you find one that has everything, secure it. Buy the domain, register it, get all the social media um, addresses that you need, and create the email address to match it. The trademark can be the last thing that you do. It's the most expensive thing that you're going to do, and it's the most con time-consuming thing that you're going to do. But once you have all those other things in place, it works for the trademark because one of the questions that they ask you if you try to do it on your own is to show proof of those things being married, that name and that company, in a public place. A website would be the best um, example to screenshot a website and send it to the whatever lawyers assigned to the case. So you want to do all those other things to now secure the name. And now your brand has a name. Well, your, your vision has a name because they didn't accept you yet. You're in a brand yet. But your vision has a name. And that concludes this one. And then we're going to move into branding. Um, every business that you want to take publicly should trademark. Absolutely. If, if you're an artist. I don't know if you know. Um, Ray J bought the trademark to Princess Love um, just to be spiteful. And yeah. She couldn't release any products or anything under her name. Yeah, 50 Cent did it to uh, Tiara Marie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and then Fendi also did it to Nicki Minaj at one point too. Yeah, so it's a big, yeah, it's a big thing. It's really a big thing. And you don't know how big you're gonna be. And even if you're, if it, like success for me is if you can replace your job, whether you're making 30, 40, 50,000 a year off of what you love, you are successful because instead of putting that time into somebody else, you were able to put it into yourself and live the same way you were living before. Now you can only go up from there. So if you're going to be able to do that, trademark your name. If that's what you, one of your goals is like, I want to replace my job with what I'm doing and put my time into that trademark your name. If you're going to go public trademark your name, it's important. There's so many horror stories of people who are huge that can't get their name back. And that goes to show you money and power, make it. no one cares when it comes to that trademark, that stamp. You can't break that seal. It's either you're gonna pay what they ask for, or if they don't want money and they just wanna spite you, you gotta live with that. So that's why I think it's, uh, that's not why I think, that's why I say it's so important to check all those things before you make the decision on your name to make sure all those aspects are available and that you're not held hostage for a website or, you know, to, to, to even have someone collect money off of your blood, sweat, and tears because you didn't know that it was trademarked by someone else when you try to, you know, go, go out there with it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and like. Stay tuned for my next video.